Um, okay, so just to get straight into it, um, the intro of the question that I posted, uh, the topic was obviously what's in the name. This week's parish we read that Yaakov and Esau had their, sorry, Yaakov and the Malach of Esau had their momentous fight. Um, Yaakov went back, obviously was on the way to Eretz Canaan and was going to be, um, was about to meet Esau. He was crossing over the Yaradan Valley, Jordan Valley, and on the way back, there's lots of different explanations, Midrash and very interesting. He went back to pick up a jar of olive oil. Um, some say the reason he went back for it was obviously because every single item of Yaakov contained tremendous holy sparks and he didn't want to leave everything, anything behind. Um, another Midrash says, says that that jar of olive oil was the um, anointing jar of oil that would that Shmuel, uh, Shmuel Hanavi would use to anoint um, the various kings. Um, of Israel as well as Mashiach and therefore it was a very, very holy jar of oil. Regardless, he went back and when he was over, he met the Malach of Esau. And there was a whole fight, I'm being very brief, uh, there was a whole fight and he kept the Malach of Esau all the way until sunrise when it was the Malach of Esau's turn to sing Shir Hashem to Hashem and, in order, and the Malach said to Yaakov, you have to let me go and Yaakov says, no, not until you give me a blessing. And um, the, he gave him a blessing of changing his name from Yaakov to Yisrael. And then he hit him in the hit him in the um, thigh, um, which set in motion us not to either get a nausea, um, the sciatic nerve in um, in meat, and therefore effectively no more can we have any rump steak, effectively, um, unless you're a Yemenite or Sephardi and know and know how to remove the sciatic nerve. Not a different subject, but what we see interesting is that Yaakov and Yisrael are inter interchangeable. Sometimes we are called Bnei Yaakov, sometimes we are called Bnei Yisrael. Sometimes Yaakov is called Yaakov, sometimes Yaakov is called Yisrael. And it changes through the whole Torah up until Yaakov passes away. Um, even with Bilam, Bilam also uses the both names of Yaakov and Yisrael. When we look at another name change, another of, uh, one of, another one of our forefathers also had a name change and that was Avraham. Avraham was called Avram and he had his name changed to Avraham. Except with Avraham, we don't see the same treatment as the Yaakov. With Avraham, he never went back to be called Avraham. And the Talmud actually states that if you call Avraham Avraham, you are breaking a biblical, biblical prohibition. Why? What's the difference between ya Avraham's name being called Avraham and not going back to Avraham? And Yaakov's name can be interchangeable between Yaakov and Yisrael. So a simple ex explanation is that Avraham um, we, has the additional name Hey. So before her, beforehand he was called Avram, which means the exalted father, uh, or the exalted, the father who is the exalted one. And after he becomes Avra, Avram with a Hey, Avraham, which means the exalted father of the multitude. But more specifically, he has the, the Avram's name had the additional Hey. And generally we know the Hey is associated with the creative element of godliness, of, of God. You have Yudke Vovke. God's four-letter name, which creates um, Lamaila Mistashros above infinity and the, the, the creation that goes above Tamadas, uh, logical and rational reasoning. And you have Elekeino, which is the name of God, which creates nature and the, um, the uh, false image, or the not so false image, the superficial image that we see around us. So Avraham had that hey in his name, giving him a far more exalted status than he was orig originally called Avraham. And therefore, if you call him Avram, you're diminishing his status. Fine. Yisrael and Yaakov is two separate names. Yaakov is Yaakov and Yisrael is Yisrael. Yes, Yisrael seems to be a higher name, but it's a separate name. So therefore, the Torah has no problem calling one, sometimes Yaakov Yaakov, sometimes calling Yisrael Yisrael, sometimes calling us Bnei Yisrael, sometimes calling us Bnei Yaakov. Fine. Very, one explanation. But you still have to ask, what's the difference between Yaakov and Yisrael? Why are sometimes we are called Yaakov, and some, Bnei Yaakov, or Yaakov is called Yaakov, and sometimes it's called Yisrael? What, and especially in this particular point, the, the, um, with, the, with the whole story of the, of the Malach with a, or the Malach of Esau and Yaakov and the fight, his name is changed to Yisrael, but shortly after that he's called Yaakov again. And then after that it's called Yisrael, what is the name Yisrael and Yaakov symbolizing? The Yaakov and Yisrael both have, the, they both Obviously, we know that generally the, a name has a symbolic meaning, also contains what we call the koyach, the potential of the individual in a, in a micro, on a micro level. So obviously the name Yaakov and Yisrael also does the same. Yaakov has a, a potential, a, a, a koyach, a, a power, and so does Yisrael. And depending upon what the scenario is, we are therefore called Yaakov and Yisrael. Depending upon what's happening and what power we are 
hoping to tap into or needing to get from that name. So what's the difference? What are, I'm not just going to leave it there. What's the actual koyach? Uh, what's the actual potential power that we get from it? So Yaakov has something that Yisrael doesn't have and Yisrael has something Yaakov doesn't have. What does Yaakov have? So we know generally that Yaakov actually has several different names. Um, both not so um, complimentary. One is he's called Yaakov because Akev, when, when he was being born, when he was being born, when he was not being born, when he was born, um, he was meant to be the first twin. And what, uh, what happened was, is that Aesop Ace, right, pulled him back in and Aesop came out instead. And therefore he was called Akev, he ground by the heel. That's one meaning. Aesop used the same terminology for a late, in a later point for a very different meaning, and that is referring to him as du, uh, duplicit. Duplicit. Yeah, duplicit. When, how? When Yaakov sold the birthright from Esau. And ya- Esau says, now I understand why he's called Yaakov, because he's a liar. He's duplicit. He's, um, he does things which are, which are dishonest. So the, the, the name Yaakov, Akev, ha- ya- sorry, the name Yaakov has... Oh, don't worry. Um, the name Yisrael has another meaning, which is Sarakel. Well, it has several meanings. But according to one explanation, Sarakel is the, the, either the, a, a, god, a godly officer or a divine officer or a divine master um, and has a very, very different connotation. Generally, when Yaakov was called Yaakov was during periods of strife in his life. During periods, when he, when he was in the house of Lovon, he was called Yaakov. When uh, there were various issues in his house and when there was times of trouble and um, obstacles and challenges, he was called Yaakov. During times that were peaceful and that were happy and he was growing as you know, things were pleasant, then he was called Yisrael. So to the Jewish people. During times that, that we were going through strife and there were issues, one of them was when Bilon was cursing us, we were called Bnei Yaakov. But there were times when we were going to be growing and developing and Bilom interchanged the two names. At one point he calls us Bnei Yaakov, but when he's praising us in another way, he calls us Bnei Yisrael. So obviously Yaakov seems to be associated with a negative strife, um, time of strife, and Yisrael is associated with a time of positivity and building and growth. How? So because Yaakov's name means heel or duplicit, duplicit, that's the right word, um, implies that basically there are times when, both with Yaakov but also with ourselves, <coughs> we are dealing with what we call the ache of the very heal the very mundane or the very superficial level of reality where we are continuously faced with the duplicit reality where everything around us is not what it seems and therefore we are, we are dealing with the most mundane the most spiritually removed and i don't just mean now in this era i mean generally when you go to work when you when you're busy in life and things you're dealing with things which usually are very mundane go shopping you know driving from a to b they're not particularly spirit holy or spiritual they, they are the ache of but many times it's also when, in order to interact with the world around us, when we have to be at work, so to speak, or we have to, in our lives, we have to change, our, change ourselves. We can't necessarily always be the true individual we are. Not everyone appreciates honesty in its uh, simple form. Sometimes people are like, hey, I prefer a fake person. I don't, don't want you to tell me the truth. So also, Yaakov, the name, you have to change the way we operate. That we're not necessarily going to be holy. Maybe we just leave it if we keep switching off. Hmm? There are times when we just have to change the way we operate. I don't mean necessarily necessarily lie. There's times when we can't necessarily be the open, honest individuals in order to bring about a greater sense of spirituality around us. And that's the ache of mentality or the yak mentality. But there are also times when we are Yisrael mentality. When things are going well, when we are in a spiritual high. And, you know, on a, on a daily basis, you're a yak, you could be a, a individual is a yak of Jew when he's at work. But when he's in shul, when he's dampening, he's a Yisrael Jew. Things are going positive it's a, in a spiritual environment. Yaakov and Yisrael are two different types of individuals inside of us. I don't mean to say we're schizophrenic or you know, we're, we're not to make fun of any mental health issues. But no, that's not to say that we, we, are, we, are, we have to be one or the other. We are both. But there are times when, when we are Yisrael and there are times when we are Yaakov. And by the fact that the Torah interchanges Yaakov and Yisrael one to the other throughout the whole, whole Torah implies that there is no time that you can be one without the other. There are, you, you're all, yes, there are times that you're going to be Yisrael, but you need to know that you also have to return back to being a Yaakov. You can't always be on a spiritual high. 
You also have to go down to the A curve. You have to go down to the lowest points and work with it. Sometimes not necessarily in a spiritual way. Sometimes you have to really cover, up, cover over and conceal your own um, spiritual heights and you know deal on that level with whatever you're dealing with. Uh, deal with the you know dealing with, deal with the lowest on the on their level, so to speak. And because you have those two back and forth, the Yaakov and Yisrael, we see that what did what does what did Avraham represent? There's a, I mean, there's a concept of rots of a shul, uh, the dynamic versus static. So Avraham wasn't dynamic; he was static. He reached a high level, Avraham, a very very high level, and that's where he, that's where he remained. Obviously, that's not to say he was a static individual. I'm not implying that, but his level of holiness wasn't going back and forth dealing with the very, very lowest. Like